Hello and welcome to another episode of Middens vs. the Magnus Carlsen bot. This episode I'm going to be using Magnus 28 years old and it was this year he won his third World Blitz Chess Championship and he had also been the highest rated player in the world for 100 months in a row so I have a feeling he's going to be pretty strong. Last match, sorry for the spoilers, uh, Magnus was actually able to beat Middens. They'd drawn the first game so this is going to be an opportunity to see whether Middens will be able to fight back against Magnus this time playing as black. So let's get into the game. So Magnus starts with the ready opening, which is a perfectly sound opening. Pretty good choice for playing a computer, even though he is one. And then we have normal developing moves, and this move here is known as the Torre attack. Or the Tor attack, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Often when I play as um, black, I play some line in the Queen's pawn opening, aka d4, um, where it ends up being called the anti tori attack. So I guess this is what you want to try to avoid with what I like to play. And we have both sides, just getting the pieces out and mobilizing those bishops. Uh, Midden's places, it's dark squared bishop on the dark squares, obviously. Well, sort of those gaps in the pawns, I mean. And Magnus does the same um, on the light squares. We have castles, castles. Middens wisely tries to take a little bit of space off of that bishop queen battery, breaking up the battery, forcing Magnus's bishop back. Now Magnus is going to open up the position. The sort of stranglehold that Middens had on the position has been broken up a little bit. Um, Magnus is getting everything open and creates a new bishop queen battery this time. But Middens blocks this off with the pawn. And we just have some rerouting of pieces, and we have also some moves to prevent um, various pieces from jumping into the position, namely h6 and a3. Magnus jumps his knight right into the center of the board where it belongs. So this knight has some pretty great scope at the moment. We have some rerouting of the bishops. Now, it looks like, is Magnus thinking about doubling the rooks, maybe? No, he's not. He plays a pawn move, and then it looks like maybe the pawn move is to just help strengthen that e5 square. But it does allow that bishop to slide into e4 there. And we have a trade of knights. And some captures. Magnus checks Midden's king. So here, apparently Magnus missed a combination. So let's have a look at that combination. Okay, I don't see how that's much of a punishment. Maybe at supercomputer bot chess level, but that is well over my head. So we'll continue on. Midden's has a very nice formation on the F file, creating a little bit of a gun. When you stack your rooks and your queen, um, sort of with the queen at the back, it's called the Alakine's gun. I'm not sure about if the queen's in the middle, but we'll say so. Still pretty good. And we have a bit of pawn tension in, in the uh, C file as well. We have a trade of rooks. And now Magnus tries to pressure va various points of Midden's position. We have some pawn captures. And we have another trade of queens, another forced trade. Um, and we see Magnus has his pawn rolling down the board once again, which seems to be becoming a common theme of these episodes. Magnus is really um, taking control of the game and moving Midden's queen around, and you can see he manages to nab another pawn. The problem with ending up with a knight in the endgame versus a bishop, especially when it's this open of an endgame and the kings are relatively close to their starting grid, the bishop is just going to have way too much scope. So Magnus is up a pawn, he has a pass pawn. He needs to deal with that knight and help support that pawn to get it down the board. So let's see if he's able to do that. I have a trade of pawns there. Magnus isn't super worried about that g-pawn because he knows protecting the b-pawn and helping that roll down the board is his main priority. 
Middens manages to capture that pawn. So that's equal material again now. But there's still the issue of the bishop having a lot more scope than that knight. Magnus protects his pawn and brings the king in to slowly try to bring that pawn down. But now Middens is rolling its pawn. So let's see who can get there first. Check from Magnus. Magnus pushes. Magnus pushes again. Middens pushes. And Magnus is first to promote, um, which Middens needs to chop off. So now, all of a sudden, uh, Magnus is completely up a piece. It just needs to prevent this pawn from promoting. We have the White King coming in to help. And now Magnus is going to try to prevent this pawn promoting, but the pawn has to promote anyway. And Middens wants to try to keep at least one piece on the board, even though it's impossible for Middens to survive at this point. And that knight is just unable to escape with the mating net created by Magnus's king. Um, and unfortunately, Middens' king is already cut off, um, and it will be swiftly checkmated here. What a game from Magnus. Magnus is proving to be a very strong engine. Magnus is consistently getting on top here in these games. It looks like Middens tends to get a positional advantage at the start, but then Magnus is just very clutch in being able to pounce on any opportunities created by little slip-ups from Middens, and he's been absolutely class in the endgame as well. So great game to see there. Hope you enjoyed that one.